Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to finish setting up that lab to support Ansible deployments. And here's what we're going to do today. First, in routers 2 and router 3, we're going to configure the DHCP scopes to support the LAN environment to kind of simulate that zero touch provisioning or as close as we can get to zero touch provisioning with Catalyst equipment. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the LAN interfaces of both those routers to support that layer 3 switch. And then finally, on those two routers, as well as those layer three switches on each network, we're going to configure the SSH so we can remote access into it and be able to utilize that to work with Ansible. Once all that's said and done, we're going to hop over to our 20.04 Ubuntu box and install Ansible, the latest version, so we can begin writing scripts and deploying some automation in the next video. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so you've heard what we're going to do. Let's get right to it. Okay, so as you can see here, we're in router two right here. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a essentially a DHCP scope for the LAN, right? So we're going to do enable configure terminal and we're going to do IP DHCP excluded addresses. That's going to be 10.1.1.1. This can go to 10.1.1.10, right? That's going to be for the, the LAN segment off of gig01. Then we're going to do a IP DHCP pool. And we're going to name it network1, right? And then basically it's going to be a network 10.1.1.0 with a slash 24. And then domain name is going to be everyday IT. Yep. And then we got to set the DNS server to. We're going to just use Google's DNS. Right there. So the primary 8.8.8.8, 8.8.4.4. Uh, .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 and that sets up the DHCP scope. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a no IP domain lookup and then we're going to do a we're going to be doing a domain name there you go and it's going to be everyday underscore IT oops Everyday IT. Oh. There you go. IP domain name. There you go. All right. And then, so we set the domain name and create a username. And that's going to be me. We're going to set me at privilege 15 with a password of Cisco. And then we're going to do an enable password of Cisco. And then we should be able to do a crypto key RSA generate. Oof generate RSA and the defaults one thousand or uh, 512 we're going to do 1024 so we utilize SSH2 right there we change it to SSH2 and we're going to do a line VTY04 logging synchronous yep right there login Local, so we're going to utilize the local username database, and we're going to do a trans oops, helps if I spell correctly transport input SSH, transport out all. Oh, there we go. So that should be it for that. 
So now we're going to go to interface GI0 slash 1, which is the LAN interface. And we're going to do an IP address of 10.1.1.1 with a slash 24. We're going to do a no shut. And we're going to do an IP OSPF1 area 0. That way it adds that into the, the OSPF routing table. And right that will also join uh, to the switch when OSPF when we enable that. Let's go down to router 3 and do the exact same thing. So we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing. So we're going to do an IP DHCP excluded addresses 10.2.2.1. Oops. 10.2.2.10. There we go. IPDHCP pool. And it's going to be network. It's going to be network 2. Exclu excuse the dog. He's, uh, he loves shaking. Okay, sorry. That threw, that threw me for a loop. Okay, so it's going to be network 2. And network it's gonna be a 10.2.2.0 with a slash 24. It's gonna be a domain name of everyday IT. It's gonna be a DNS server. Google. Exit no IP domain lookup. IP domain name everyday IT. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to do username. Same thing. Same thing there. We're going to do a line VTY04. Logging synchronous, login local, transport input SSH, transport out all. And we're going to do an exit interface GI01. We're going to set up the LAN interface. So it's going to be a IP address 10.2.2.1. No shut and IP OSPF one area zero. We're gonna end and write that. All right, so those are the two routers. And that's gonna pretty much solve everything we need for the routers. We should be able to buddy into them. So let's do that real quick. So we're gonna do a 10.0.1.2 uh, wrong address. 10.0.1.2. There we go. Because 1.1 is the, the other router. So we're going to just do this here. There. And voila, we are now in the router 2. So SSH is working. Now let's go to the SWA right here. This one hasn't been configured at all. So we're going to go ahead and hit this up real quick. We're going to quickly do this. So configure T. Let me go ahead and knock this out quick. All right. So configure T. Host name, site two. SW, oops, that's site one, SWA. Line console zero, logging synchronous line VTY zero through 15, 
logging synchronous login local transport input ssh transport output all exit no ip domain lookup ip domain name everyday e okay username okay we got that we're gonna do a quick crypto key generate rsa again we're gonna go to 1024 we're gonna do an ip ssh version 2 okay we're gonna interface gi 0 slash 0 and we're gonna make that into a routed port which basically just dedicates a vlan but we're gonna make that into a router port and we're gonna do an ip dhcp ip address dhcp go ip ospf1 area zero no shut hmm. it's funny as soon as you just wipe out that the interface it, it comes back live so those are the minor glitches you see in uh in cml so that should be good. Let me do a show run food crypto. Okay. Okay, so it does have crypto key, so I should be able to get to it. 10.1.1.2 Okay, so we got a minute. All right, so the the switch over there is working good, switch A. And we're going to switch B or switch to switch A. And we're going to do essentially the exact same thing, hopefully with less troubleshooting an issue that didn't really exist. All right, so I can see that one. Let's try this one here. And I'm also in for that. Awesome. All right, so now we've set up the switch A on both uh, sides of the network. We set up those two routers, just like we said. 
set up the DHCP scopes. I think the reason why the DHCP wasn't working on the first one was because the the connection issue, which as you can see from from a CML, sometimes you gotta tweak with it a little bit, reboot things like we did in the last video, or erase and and do a new connection here and there. So now let's go install Ansible on the let's go install Ansible. So right here is the Ansible server I just built. Just to prove it, we'll go right back into it. And there you see it. It's a Ubuntu 2004.1 long-term support. Okay, so the first thing you do is you do a sudo apt update. And it tells me that all my packages are up to date, but if they weren't, what you would do is you would do a sudo apt upgrade dash y. But there's nothing to upgrade. So we're going to do a sudo apt install ansible. Yes. And this is installing the ansible itself. Okay. Now we do ansible dash dash version. And right there you can see we have Ansible running. Okay, so there you have it. We have made the DHCP scope. We have also made the overall interface for the LAN interfaces for the WAN side, the, the router, and on the switch side. We joined those to OSPF. We also installed Ansible on the Ubuntu box. So next time what we're going to do is we're going to go and make an Ansible script, an Ansible inventory file, show some common settings you would use in a lab environment and you know in a in a production environment we'd show where you'd change those back. And we're gonna go look at changing some configs and automating some of the daily work we do. Stay tuned.